Good morning. It's 1947 and it's The Ghost and Mrs Muir. This is a black and white film. It's set in England, first London and then by the seaside, the coast. But it was actually shot in California, which is a place in America. The story opens in London at the turn of the century. It says the turn of the century at the beginning, although to me it looked very much like the turn of the previous century, 1900 or so. Mrs Lucy Muir, played by Jean Tierney. Mrs Lucy Muir's husband had, had recently died and her fussing mother-in-law and fussing sister-in-law can't cope with Mrs Muir's headstrong attitude to moving out on her own with her daughter. She approaches an estate agent who attempts to interest her in a raft of properties other than the one that she's f picked up and read at first, insisting that, uh, that that one won't be suitable. In the end, he has to drive her over to that remote sea cottage where they experience a ghostly sound and they run out. He explains that this happens every time a tenant pays interest in the property. Uh, he, he still insists that it's not suitable for her. He, ex he explains that the previous owner was a seaman who committed suicide. But, you know, nevertheless, Mrs Lucy Muir feels that this is the place for her. So she goes ahead with it and together with her daughter Anna and her maid Martha, they move in. On the first night, an apparition of the previous owner visits Captain Daniel Gregg, who's played by Rex Harrison. He's a sea captain with a seafaring turn of tongue. Lucy is at first frightened, but only for a moment, and soon not only accepts that there is a ghost in front of her, but she doesn't back down and maintains command of the situation. Daniel tells Lucy that he didn't commit suicide at all. It was merely an accident. He kicked the valve on the gas heater as he had, that he had in his room while he was asleep one cold wintry night. Now Lucy's fussing in-laws turn up to inform her that her investment has dried up, which was a gold mine, and that she's now broke, so she must move back to London with them, which is what they want. Daniel advises her not to. Now, being a ghost, only Lucy can hear him. He pushes the in-laws from the house uh, and then puts it to Lucy that although he can't, she can't pay the rent, all is not lost, she can write a book about Daniel and his seafaring adventures. Over a period of time, he dictates and she types or writes and they start to fall in love. Ultimately, however, Daniel pushes Lucy to find an actual living man rather than a ghost. Daniel calls Lucy by the name Lucia. Lucy goes to London to get the manuscript published, which after a brief complication and some help from Daniel's ghost, she manages to. While she's there, she encounters Miles Fairley, another author who ingratiates his way into her affairs. And he publishes under the name of Uncle Neddy, writing children's books. Captain Daniel Gregg's story becomes successful and royalties come in for Mrs Lucy Muir and she buys Gold Cottage instead of renting it. Daniel leaves Lucy one night, implanting the idea that he was only ever a dream from Lucy's perspective so that she could pursue life with someone living rather than a ghost. That's his last gallant move. However, it turns out that Miles Fairley was actually married with children and that this affair with Lucy wasn't the first in his marriage. The whole story is quite elegantly put together. Now this is a 1947 film. I've done many films around that that year. So as you probably know, Technicolor by then was accepted by the public and becoming expected as well. As well as other colour processes, Technicolor isn't the other, uh, isn't the only colour. Um, I think this film particularly benefits, though, from being black and white. The photography and the lighting is superbly done. Music won awards as well. The storytelling is, of course, overly sentimental, as befitting this age, and is of a particular format, which seems a bit strange and stilted today. But nevertheless, I see that there's a strong story in this, and there is a particular pace of interest that works even today. It's got a very modern pacing of events and uh, and beats at one point in the sh in the shooting when when this was being filmed at one point in the shooting Jean Tierney uh, Mrs Muir broke her leg <laughs> but was able to continue shooting by hiding her cast under the long skirts which were the fashion at the time that this film was set in for a 1947 film this story is strong in feminism and I 
I personally think that it would be a superb film to remake for nine or for 2022. A contemporary rendition of it would be very successful, I suggest. So have a good weekend. Um, 1947, The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. Thank you very much.